honor killing of Iraqi YouTuber sparks mass outrage. On January 31st, a young female Iraqi YouTube star was murdered by her father in the southern province of uh, Diwaniya. The victim was identified as 22-year-old uh, Tiba al-Ali. The news of this murder was announced by Iraq's Interior Ministry spokesman, Saad Man, on Twitter. Tiba had gained a sizable following on YouTube, with her channel garnering over 25,000 subscribers. A police source verified that Tiba traveled to Turkey with her family in 2017, but refused to return with them and chose to stay in Turkey instead, where she had lived ever since. She posted contents about her daily life, which often featured her fiance, Mohammed. She was visiting family in Iraq recently to, quote, resolve the family dispute in a definitive manner. Upon her death, unverified audio recordings of Tiba and her father's conversations show that Tiba fled because she was RAPE'd by her brother, but nevertheless, her father disapproved of her choice to live in Turkey. Her father admitted that he killed her in his initial confessions. Tiba's murder ignited outrage among Iraqis on social media who held protests in Baghdad on February 5th. Unbelievable. Yeah. So I think this is really important to talk about because it highlights a few broader, I mean, one, this is like a young woman who lost her life because she wanted to live somewhere safer for herself where she didn't have to be in community with her brother who did one of the most horrific things you can do to someone, let alone your own sister. Okay. And then it, it plays into broader issues. Like this is so crazy to me. Let me pull up the exact quote so that I don't misreport it because I couldn't believe this. Um, where is it to date? No law in Iraq criminalizes domestic violence. Wait, you could just, there's nothing, there's no laws? You could just, just use, you just beat your wife or your daughter? And This is what was reported in Al Jazeera a few days ago. Oh, wow. To date, no law in Iraq criminalizes domestic violence. A draft domestic violence law was first introduced into Parliament in 2014, but progress has stalled amid widespread political opposition from legislators who believe that it would, quote, erode Iraq's social fabric. And yeah, un 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 unfriendly atheist is saying that's Islam. So like, we talk about this often when it comes to honor killings, Armin, especially when it comes from an Islamic context, that technically the honor killing itself is not Islamic. It's not technically halal, all this stuff. But the abuses. But what is Islamic? Yeah, the yeah, abuse. What, what is Islamic is that if you do kill your own flesh and blood, there is less punishment if that person is a female. If it is, it's less punishment if it is your own daughter. And that's reflected in Iraq's penal codes right now. If you kill your own daughter or sister, there is less punishment than if it was a man that was killed. And then it's also reflective of Islam in the sense that we know, like Surah 434, that beating is act actively mandated in certain contexts. And so when people are saying we can't have a domestic violence law, anti-domestic violence law, because it would erode our social fabric, mm. these are some of the broader, like that's coming from somewhere. Right. <laughs> Am I making sense? Yeah. So basically, let me, let, I will rephrase this and you let me know if I'm basic, making sense or not. Okay. So what is not allowed in Islam is for you to kill your wife, your daughter, or your sister. That is not allowed in Islam. Okay? There's, that is condemned in Islam. However, 
honor killing is still related to Islam for three reasons. So again, killing, killing your wife, killing your daughter, killing your sister, haram, it's a sin in Islam. But Islam, okay, tells you, not, not only allows it, but mandates it, that you beat your disobedient wives after you try two other things if it doesn't work. Right? And that makes it, that does two things. It normalizes physical violence on women. And it also makes it difficult for you to have laws that protects women because that would be un-Islamic laws if you want to introduce that because you're basically challenging the Quran. So that's the first reason why honor killings are more likely in when Islam is being adhered to. Two, Islam requires less punishment for killing of women in your family than men. So, for example, if you kill your son, you will get a much more, Islamically, for example, in Iran, you get a much more severe punishment than if you kill your own daughter. And even in Iran, for example, we have no punishments for you if you kill your wife in an act of jealousy, if you catch your wife in in the moment of cheating right so if you do that then you're completely excused by the law so if you in that specific condition right um so the lack of punishment so if you kill for example if you kill your own daughter in iran you could go to prison and you will be released very shortly after so my, sometimes for the but based on that calculation a lot of fathers decide like okay that's not that long of a I'll go to prison for two years, but I will have cleared my family's name. So two years is worth it. So because of the less of a punishment, more men will decide that this is worth doing. Right. And the third reason why Islam is responsible for, you know, um, honor killings um, is because of the qayrat and shame culture and modesty culture and the whole, the, the thing that drives men to go and cleanse their honor is the idea that this is shameful, this is disgusting, and this brings dishonor to the family and to you as a man who can't control your woman. So even though Islam doesn't tell you to go kill them, the fact that the level of disgust and shame associated with having women in your family that goes do does sexual things that you are or revealing things that you do not approve of, that level of disgust is the main driver why people even go do these honor killings. So in that res in that respect, Islam is, is also responsible for that. For, so for these three reasons, even though Islam doesn't tell you to go do honor killing, for these three reasons, Islam is still responsible for honor killing. Does that make sense? Completely. Definitely. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's really sad. There was one quote that I wanted to read by an Iraqi female politician that I think sums it up very well. One second. Um, uh, where did it go? Okay, so um, here's the quote. Women in our societies are hostage to backward customs due to the absence of legal deterrence and government measures, which are currently not commensurate with the size of domestic vi domestic violence crimes, wrote veteran politician Ala uh, Talabani on Twitter. And I think that, I don't know, just like sums up the issue very well. Um, D is asking, uh, she asked, is there anything like DCWF in Muslim countries? I don't know what DCWF is. Um, yeah. Like, is there, if there is obvious abuse, is there any state agency that can get involved? That's depends a good question. Muslim, I don't know. But it depends on the Muslim country. I think there, there might be in some of them, yes, and some of them, no. What so, about Iran? Do they have social services for um, abused women? I would get, I would guess yes. I think I would guess there would be. But again, I don't know how how much capable what resources do they have and what they can do it could be mm -hmm. so it's like it's usually it's not that black and white it's not like oh you have these in some in you know western or more advanced countries and you just it's just completely absent in these islamic countries it's most it's mostly it's mostly of like a spectrum right so you have it somewhat present in some islamic countries it might be close to zero in some of them there might be some 
you know a huge presence of them in what like in Iran but maybe they're limited because of the Islamic laws on what they can do and how much they could fight so again it's a spectrum and you have to like I know even in one country it could be different like for example what I would guess without checking I could be wrong about this right I would assume that in Tehran you would find a lot more resources like that than cities in Sistan Baluchistan for example like I would assume that um, a, a husband beating their wife is going to be more likely to be able to get away with it in Iran if they live in Sistan Baluchistan um, compared to living in Tehran Again, I'm not saying it's an absolute thing. I'm just saying more likely. It's not like it's not that black and white, right? So, it really depends. Um, yeah, there we go. Can you go? Wait, pause. Pause is in Iran. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> Why? What happened? I don't get this. Like, because you're just talking about, like, oh, in Iran, they might actually have these kinds of systems, blah, blah, blah. Like, people have a stereotype about what Iran is like. I don't know. I don't know if we want to get into this all right now. Cause... Wait, hold on. Let me see. Um, let me show you something. Maybe to, maybe you want me to, if, if I could find this. We should go to the next I... segment. No, no, I want to make me uh, break your mind. Um, <laughs> well, you do that every day. What's special about this one? <laughs> oh, crap, I can't find it. So, what I wanted to find a video of is in Iran, in Tehran. So, you're like Iran, like Iran is an Islamic country, right? But if you go to the rich areas, there is, I was going to find a video of a very luxurious cafe in Iran that has a pool. And has like an area of, but it's and and a salon, right? Mm -hmm. For dog owners, and the whole point of the salon and the pool and the activities is for their dogs. So rich people come and pay a lot of money with their dogs. So for their dogs to have their nail done, have their like get the haircut, have the swim in the pool, get petted, get massage, mm -hmm. and you know in Islam having dogs dogs is like haram right but again there is a difference made for rich people rich people there's this this very luxurious cafe where where the owners come and they're served and it's very high-end looking and the dogs are you know being having the time of their life uh, and their staff they're there waiting to you know respond to the, all the owners needs and everything so again your experience might will vary depending on what class of society you're in. So even in an Islamic country like Iran, you have that. You have that cafe. So if I could find that video, you would be very impressive. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.